Welcome into the Living Room Disciple Podcast. Today we are joined by worship pastor, artist, songwriter, and Grammy Award winner D. Wilson. D. has recently released new music with Anchor Hymns. He has a new song out called It's All Right. He also has another new song coming out with Anchor Hymns soon called By the Savior's Power. And he's here with us today to share his wisdom on music, worship, and spiritual formation. Before we jump into today's conversation, we wanted to let you know that our website is live at livingroomdisciple.com to find all of our content or to get in touch with us. You can also support us on Patreon. All right, let's jump into today's conversation with Dee Wilson on The Living Room Disciple, where discipleship finds a home. All right, well, we are here with Dee Wilson. Dee, how are you today? Great. How are you? Doing fantastic. We're so grateful to have you here to kind of continue this conversation that we've been having over the last month or so about worship and about music. And it is an honor to have you here. I discovered in researching for this episode that you are a Grammy Award winner for co-writing a song uh, with Jonathan (laughs) McReynolds, Moving On. Uh, Yeah. What's that like? What what does that mean to you? Uh, You know, it was was cool. I've never been the one for like, um, I'm probably the worst at celebration. (laughs) Yeah, <laughs> my wife and my wife and a lot of my community will tell you that I'm just not very good at celebrating. Um, but it, it it was pretty cool. I think the coolest part was like, you know, I have a, a she's seven year old. She's seven now. But then she was, you know, around four or five um, when we won. And uh, so just watching the light come on in my daughter's eyes yeah. um, was actually for me the coolest part. Just like just I think I think like the possibilities of the world like expanded for her. Um, mm-hmm. so for me, that was like, that, that was better than any trophy, anything. Yeah. That was awesome. Yeah. Yeah. So cool. Inspiring that next generation. Yeah. I love it. Sure. Yeah. So you are a, a worship pastor, a, a songwriter, a mm-hmm. talented musician. How many different instruments do you play? Ooh. Uh, well, I think, yeah, I think electric and acoustic count is the same. So I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna say, uh, there you go. Yeah. Um, yeah. keys. And a little drums. I I got started playing trumpet when I was a kid, but I haven't played trumpet in years. Yeah, uh, yeah. I can still probably play like a, a little things on trumpet, but yeah, I'll count it too. So yeah, I'll just count it. Yeah, I think we American. can count two different types of guitars. So we're going to say four. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Cool. So so we're going to talk a little bit about spiritual formation today. Um, Beautiful. On this podcast, I shared a little bit with uh, with with you that, that we talk about spiritual formation in terms of the things that are already surrounding us, how the things that are around mm-hmm. us are forming us 24 seven mm-hmm. in our daily lives. So what are some sure. of the ways that, that music has formed you? Um, actually, let's, let's kind of start with your story. How did you get into music in the first place? How did music become meaningful yeah. in your life? Um, yeah. So um, I was, well, you know, I come from like a musical family. My mom was a worship leader um, and, you know, just kind of music bouncing around. My, my parents listened to, show tunes and oldies is kind of what i grew up on um and then you know like later in life i would sneak you know i would sneak rap videos and pop and stuff and all that because we also were like a super churchy you know so yeah. um I, w- I would have to like sneak you know like whatever michael jackson and all those really cool <laughs> things um aside you know in, in my own private time but but even even then like i didn't really want to do music um I got, I started playing, even though, even when I started playing like trumpet and piano, I didn't like necessarily want to be doing this. Um, I, I thought I was going to be a baseball player for a while. Mm. Um, I thought I was going to be a chemist for a while because I love science. Nice. I love chemistry. Um, but it was really, uh, it was really like my mom, I, I would sit in my room and play, you know, play, play keyboard and just, you know, just make up melodies and all these things. And I was getting pretty good at it. And my mom would walk into the room um you know, because it's her door and it's her room ultimately. And uh, she'd be like, well, don't you, don't you have something to say? Like, don't you have something to sing? Mm. And I was like, no, <laughs> not at all. <laughs> I don't want to say anything. I don't want to see anything. Um, but she kept doing that over and over again for years. Um, and uh, one day she came home and she worked at a music school for, for a while as well. Music Net uh, School of Music in Chicago. Shout out Music Net. Um, and so one day she came home and she said, put on your jacket. We're going to be late. And I was mm. like, late for what? Um, she's like, you're the new tenor for the uh, for the youth praise team at church. Put on your jacket. You have a wow. And I was like, when did I sign up for this? <laughs> <laughs> right. When was I? When did I audition for this? I had I had neither signed up nor auditioned. Uh, she just put me on the team, and so 
Uh, but I remember walking into the sanctuary and just kind of getting like this vision for my life of like leading worship and writing songs. And um, I told the Lord, no, like, I, like that's yeah. not, not what we're doing. I'm going to be a starting third baseman for Chicago Cubs. We've already worked this out. Um, but, you know, God had other plans. And he's just set in motion like this series of events, uh, put people in my life, put mentors in my life, um, put different types of friends, provided me with opportunity to grow in this area. So that's ultimately what I became. Um, and that's ultimately what I said yes to was, uh, yeah, leading worship and, and leading yeah. and singing songs and writing songs. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. So, so going back to you kind of discovering this love for music, even before you started writing songs or even singing, um, mm -hmm. what, what would you say the ways are that as a child that music began to form you and shape you as a person? Yeah, for sure. Um, I mean, music was everything, you know, everything we did was musical. Um, we, we, we were, I think we might've been the only family on the block that would just re rewatch musicals over and over again. Nice. If it was seven brides for seven brothers or West side story or Oklahoma or state fair, or, you know, all the things cats, <laughs> we would just watch nice. like all these, we would just watch musicals and plays all the time. So music was kind of like everything for us. And, yeah. um, and yeah, and, and like, there's a story, I don't know if you've heard, there's just, there's a song that I have with common hymnal, um, called I've got the joy. And in the middle of it, um, I tell this story about, you know, the songs that my mother taught us to sing mm -hmm. as we were struggling and just, um, and how those songs of faith, like propelled us, you know, into different seasons of life. And so even in that regard, you know, not just the songs that we learned from outside sources, but the songs that my mother gave us, the songs that my parents gave wow. us, the songs that are, you know, that were in our churches, that our churches gave us, um, shaped us and formed us, you know, whether we, whether I knew it or not, they were absolutely shaping no me. Um, and I get, I'm, I'm so glad I get to tell that story as much as I can. And that, that story is like, that song has traveled, you know, around the country, around the world a little bit. And I'm right. so glad that like, that story of, of like formation as a child gets to go out because it's really special. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. And so now you're a parent, you're a, yeah. a worship pastor in a church. So you're kind of mm -hmm. on the other side of the coin of both of those things now, right? For um, sure. Yeah. So how do you think For about sure. those things, both in, in raising a child? Um, how do you think about music in her life? So you have a daughter, right? Yeah, I have and, a daughter and we have a, a seven month old son. Oh, congratulations. Yeah. That's awesome. Thanks. Thanks. So how do you think about music as a parent? But also, how do you think about music forming the congregants at your church? Yeah, uh, you know, as a parent, it's, it's, it's interesting, right? Because, you know, like my mom did it, but she, you know, like I, I'm definitely doing it at a, at, a, at a different level than my mom did. Mm -hmm. um, my dad, my dad worked at, he was in the army. He worked at factories for like 20 something years and he was music, he was musical ish. Uh, yeah. But he definitely didn't do it like as a profession. Um, and, and similarly with my wife's parents, like they were both very musical. My, my father-in-law is an amazing keyboardist and songwriter. Mm. My mother-in-law is a fantastic singer, vocalist. And so, mm. um, but again, like not as a profession. So the fact that me and my wife are doing this as a profession, um, there is a, there is a level of like mystery that's removed from it for our children. I think they get to see the back office stuff. They get to see sound checks and, you know, they get to, they're in the offices all the time. Um, you know, they have to wake up crazy early for church, just like we do, you know. And um, so I think a little bit of like the the sheen of it is off. So I so I'm, I'm still trying to navigate it. Like I'm not trying to push too hard. My daughter is definitely musical. Um, we just mm. discovered like a week ago or a couple weeks ago that she has actually a really good voice for a seven year old. Oh, cool. It's pretty good rhythm. She loves to dance and all these things. So for me, I'm trying to whereas like my mom would like come like get into my room and, and like, you know, kind of push me. I'm trying to learn the difference between pushing and just allowing her to love it for herself so we can get some mm. of the gleam back that yeah. it's lost because she just kind of grows up in it. You know, they're in rehearsals and stuff all the time. Right. So right. Um, I'm trying to I'm trying to leave room for her to fall in love with that on her own. Um, so that the so that yeah, some of that some of the love and mystery can return. It's like, oh, uh, and then, yeah, for my church, you know, for my church is really interesting. I'm one of uh, I would say at my at my at my um, congregation, I'm one of you know three or four people that lead with with a level of consistency, mm -hmm. um, and so that that load is is pretty shared. Like the thing I get to do at, at at church is present a different side of the world that they may not get in Colorado Springs. You know, I was born yeah. and raised in Chicago. Uh, 
you know, a lot of a lot of my people are from the South. I was raised with a lot of different musical expressions, but the ones that are home for me are still home for me. Like, you know, mm. the gospels and the jazzes and the hip hops and all those things and R&Bs and all those stuff. So um, at church, I get to actually live into and be like a, 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 a like a, a full expression of the things that have shaped me over the course of my life. And in that way, lead a congregation into something that um, that they're that they've not necessarily all experienced. You know, there's there, there's pockets with our pastors and things like that. But as a congregation, that's not what they that's not what they're used to. Um, right. And I'm totally allowed. The beautiful thing about being at New Life in this season um, is that like the 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 door is so wide open for me to right. live into that expression. Um so that it's not, you know, it's not like just some special thing they do every, you know, every five Sundays. It's like when right. when D is on stage, you're getting yeah. that, you know, that expression and it's embraced. Yeah. So, yeah, that's beautiful. Yeah. So it's it's obvious listening to your albums, your EPs, your work with with Common Hymnal and, and Anchor Hymns, that there is some gospel flair to to you that doesn't sound like an old New Life album. Um, and so what, (laughs) what is that like bridging those gaps? Those are two different genres of music. They both have the end goal of glorifying Jesus Christ, but but what's that like to bridge that gap, to be, to be a gospel musician leading worship for a traditionally white congregation that, that sings more contemporary Christian worship music? Yeah. I mean, it's the, you know, it's, it's in, 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 there's two things like it's, it's the person I've always been, um, you know, like I, I was always a person with an eclectic friend group. Mm. Um, I was always a person with more with an eclectic music taste. Again, like even with gospel, you know, like being a foundation or being a I, well, I'll say this too. Um, I, I I did have to learn to love gospel later in life, like mm. learn to love gospel music later in life. I didn't love it until you know close to my senior year in high school because um, I I mostly honestly listen growing up did listen to you know, the, the Maranatha stuff, the vineyard nice. stuff, you know? Yeah. Um, and so, but then, you know, then came like, we, we still had, you know, it's, I feel like you have to, you should go to, you should go to jail if you don't listen to, um, oh my gosh, I'm blanking on his name. <laughs> um, oh my gosh. I cannot believe I'm blanking on his name so bad. Um, Jesus is the answer. Take, um, uh, take me back. Andre Crouch. I don't there know what's wrong with me. I'm so sorry. <laughs> yeah, I feel like listening. I feel like not listening to Andre Crouch, no matter what background you come from, should be illegal. Um, yeah, I'm in so trouble. I have some Crouch. listening to do. <laughs> oh my gosh! Yeah, please, <laughs> please, 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 please. He's the forefather of so many of so many yeah. things that that um, are going on in in a lot of different genres. But like, mm. um, so we still listen to Andre. We still listen to Ron Canoli, and you know, yeah. when it came to Israel's and all these things. So like. Yep. Um, but then I, I, I was still seeing West Side Story. So everything, you know, I have this like all these things buzzing around in my head. Um, so it's just it's you know, in a lot of ways, it's the person that I've always been trying to right. trying to figure out all these different things that have entered into my pot. Because I know hmm. um, that when that I know that God uses everything and I know God uses anyone. Um, so, you know, I'm anyone and I have a bunch of everything. So I have to figure yeah. out how God can use it. Um, I love that. And to figure out how, how things how tell to people, like, right? allow the Lord to use it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'd be, by, I'd be poetic by accident sometimes. Oh, um, I love it. I love it. <laughs> um, and so, yeah. So, A, that, you know, it's a person I've always been, but at, mm-hmm. but at the same time, like, it's, it's, it's also still a dream come true. Um, right. That, uh, like, you know, everything up to this moment has led to me. I, I When I speak about being at New Life, it's, I talk about it being like, a dream that I didn't know I had. I was being shaped by these songs too at 16 and 15, you know, sure. des- you know, Desperation Band and New Life yeah. Worship and, you know, like all these, I, we were listening to those songs in Chicago. They were tearing my right. church up the same way they were tearing everybody else's church up. And right. so um, now I, now to be part of that story and to get to add all the things that God put in, put in me as a, as a younger man um, yeah. is also, you know, a dream come true. So it doesn't yeah. feel and I've always been, and I've been to churches like that. You know what I mean? Like, I, in a lot of ways, it feels like God has just charted this bridging mm. of bridging of gaps um, throughout my entire life. And so now I just get to do it, and it's super, yeah, yeah super dope. Praise God for that. Um, so, what would you say the the differences might be in formation? How? Let's just talk about maybe your personal life when you are listening to gospel music versus contemporary worship music. How how might those songs form you? differently um sitting down to listen to oh, one versus yeah. the other or being in a church worshiping gospel music versus being in a church worshiping with 
contemporary worship music? Yeah. Um, you know, I, I, I don't know. That's a really interesting question because, you know, in a lot of ways, uh, in a lot of ways, worship is worship, right? And hundred percent, um, like the 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 equity and the equality of it across um, across cultural lines and across you know like the you know across borders, like even just natural borders, it um, it kind of equates to the same thing for those people. So yeah. you know, like when so like we had this <laughs> sorry we were we were recording um, we were recording an album in twenty twenty one. And we had this song called Awaken the Anthem. Yeah. And um, and so, you know, like we, as we were arranging it, we put all these like licks and chops and all these, you know, cool chords and stuff like that. And so it became a thing around New Life to be like, well, let's play the gospel chops, you know, or the gospel hits or whatever. <laughs> and uh, our, so our drummer, our drummer, uh, Jared, who's one of the whitest people in the history of the world, um, he leans to talk about it. He's like, hey, guys, I'm pretty sure. In black churches, these are just called hits. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have you to call them you, gospel. <laughs> you, know, you know, so we, we should probably yeah. just call them hits, you know? Yeah. And so, like, that's those are those those are things I'm trying to feel. It's like, you know, in, in if you go to a black church, they're not saying, oh, we're playing gospel today. Or, you know what I mean? It's, sure. that's, it's just right. worship. Like, uh, you know, yeah. they, they, they call it worship just like everybody else does. Um, if you were to go to Argentina and, you know, the music they'll play, they, they'll just call it worship. Um, yeah. And so... Uh, so for me, I, I I have a harder time answering that because in the way in 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 a way they're both shaping me the same, hmm. in that they're both expressions of my worship. Um, yeah. Now so one is more one is more music musically advanced than the other. Yeah. Um. You know, one is one is you know sometimes it's sometimes like a simpler offering, um, is cool. But you know, for me, who can who can do a lot more things like even my version of simple is different mm-hmm. than a lot of other people's, you know? Yeah. So I don't know. I don't know if there's a necessarily like, if I'm listening to contemporary worship, I'm, I'm, you know, being shaped one way or if I'm listening to gospel, I'm being shaped another way. I think I'm being shaped the same way by both. Yeah. Um, in that I get to see Jesus. I get to see God for who he is and for what he's right. like. Um, and, you know, and yeah, I, I don't know. Yeah. I hope that's a good answer. <laughs> yeah, no, I really appreciate that answer. I think it, it keeps the main thing the main thing. It keeps Jesus at the center, um, and I think yeah. a lot of times we can we can divide ourselves more than we need to. Um, but but praise God that He can be glorified so well across genre. And I appreciate yeah. what you're doing, bringing a gospel voice into um, a, a church that is has not traditionally been been used to that. I think that's one thing that that we need more of in the kingdom, especially in the United yeah. States, um, for where, sure. Where we can see behind the curtain and white folks can see what yeah. black folks are doing. Black folks can see what white folks are doing. Right. Yeah. Um, for sure. Yeah. So, so thank you for, for that ministry. Thank you for, for mm-hmm. what you are doing in that. Um, mm-hmm. So, so music we've, we've kind of established is, is powerful, is formative across genre. Um, but one of the other things I appreciate about you is the way that you use that time of musical worship in your, in your leading to also teach and minister mm-hmm. to your congregation. Um, so tell me a little bit about that. What does that look like for you um, in, in teaching your congregation through music? Yeah, um, I, I think, um, you know, I, 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 nowadays I used to be so uh, nervous when it came to speaking um, yeah. because early on uh, I had just so many opportunities that I felt like I didn't execute very well. Uh, and then like even worse, that was just like, man, that was just real bad. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And do you have so, any stories like that? Oh uh, man, <laughs> I do. Well, there was one. <laughs> okay, <laughs> there was one was that. Uh, oh shoot, there's this old song. It might have been "You Have Turned," that old hill song. You have turned my morning into dancing. Uh-huh. So, um, at my home church, Christian Life Center in Chicago, um, it was one of my first times being like the guy on Sunday, and mm. it would normally be when like our worship pastor and the guy under him, our two worship pastors. They would be like out of town at like some conference, and I wasn't invited yet to go to the conferences, you know. Yeah. And so, um, and so it would be just me. They'd be like, "Okay, like it's you, it's you this week," you know. Like they would help me get my set list together and all these things. And mostly, like they wouldn't necessarily say "Don't speak," but if there was like a you know like an implied, <laughs> you know, yeah, like yeah. lead the songs, you know, like do a good job leading the songs. Good, do you still do a good job like facilitating the moments. Yeah. Um, 
you know, and just get, you know, get us to the word, you know, type thing. Mm-hmm. You're, you know, I was, I don't know, I might've been 17 years old. So yeah. I had no, you know, whatever. I shouldn't yeah. have been speaking, but, right, um, right. <laughs> but, you know, one time when they were gone, I decided, you know what? Today's the day. <laughs> <laughs> Today's the day. <laughs> this is my moment. <laughs> yeah. So people wait a lifetime for a moment like yeah. this. And so, um, uh. <laughs> and so I just took it. I forgot what I said. I forgot. Yeah. I forgot how I said it, but. And, and in the moment, I, like, blacked out. <laughs> so I was just, like, you know, I was just going. And um, and I didn't necessarily – nobody that day said anything negative. Like, my pastor was really cool. Yeah. and um, But then later that week, our worship pastors pulled me in. They were like, so what did you say on Sunday? Yeah. And they're like, people are saying that you said, you know, we should be afraid <laughs> and all these things. And I was like, honestly, guys, I don't remember <laughs> Yeah, I, I blacked out. And yeah. So for like there was and there were so many times like that where I just felt so insecure because I didn't execute mm. as well as I felt I needed to. Right. Um, and so I, I but then um, it was awesome. I, I got the opportunity to be in Ten Thousand Fathers Worship School. Yeah. Um, for a year and a half, and they walk us through a lot of exhortation and, inv- and invocation and homilies and all these things that we that we get to do as students we get to practice and we get to be critiqued um you know right. with with our peers and with our coaches and we get to sharpen our skills and so it's been about um yeah it's been about four years where i have felt so much more confident taking mm. those moments and slowing down and being clear um and then and then now where i'm like looking a little bit for those moments looking for those right. spots where you know, I, I may feel the spirit push one way or push another way or a song may be, you know, it may be a song that we don't that we that we don't sing about like a subject matter that we don't sing about enough. And I get to take a, a small, you know, whatever, a minute and just right. and exhort and invoke and teach. And um, and so, yeah, I think I'm, I'm definitely better at it than I used to be. I'm not I've seen people. I still know people that are masters at it. Aaron Keys is a master. John Egan. Yeah, they're just masters at taking those moments in in like pastoring um and uh i get i still get to learn from from those guys as well i i so yeah I, I i appreciate you highlighting that because i've worked at it <laughs> yeah no you do a great job I, I, I remember so i follow the the new life worship instagram account and i'm a worship mm. pastor too our audience already knows that but um but i i sh- i borrowed i stole a a video of yours where where you said you said when you turn on the radio, Katy Perry doesn't start singing just because you turned it on. We're, yeah. we're tuning into something. Every time we gather here on a Sunday morning, we're tuning into something that has been happening from the beginning of time and will continue yes. on for eternity. And that was so yes. powerful. And I borrowed it straight up. And Good. that Sunday morning, the, the looks my church was giving me when I said Katy Perry, they were like, why is he talking about, <laughs> why is he talking about Katy Perry right now? <laughs> but I, I borrowed it word for word. Um, great. Man, awesome. It was, hey, it was dude. so good. It was so good. I'm glad, I'm glad to hear that, that you support that. Um, cause I, I just admitted to stealing your content. Um, but, I love it. Yeah. I, I, a, a, a pastor friend told me you have to give credit the first two times and the third time it's yours. So there you go. I think I actually did credit you. If I, if I remember right, I'll have to go back and yeah, watch so the you, live stream. You say it one more time. <laughs> by the, by yeah. the third time, you didn't even have there to say go. my name at all. It's just your thing now. Awesome. There you go. I love it. I love it. That's awesome. No, yeah, I think you do a great job. And I think there's there's such a you highlight something there. And I know this is really part of the, the 10,000 fathers and mothers thing is, is how often do we give a, a 17 year old to use your example, an acoustic guitar, have them stand on a stage, and they just all of a sudden have spiritual authority just because they have right. a musical gift. Right, um, right. And so kind how many people? Yeah. Right, exactly. So how many people are in congregations where you know, they might be hearing really solid preaching and teaching from the word. They might be engaging at the communion table and they might have this fellowship and they might be coming to Jesus through all these these forms. But but then when the, the music time starts, they're like, well, I don't know what we're going to get today just because the guy in the church or the girl in the church that happens to be a musician is the one that's up yeah. there. Um, yeah. And yeah, I think it's yeah. so crucial for, for worship pastors yeah. and leaders to, to be dialed into theology and, and doctrine and um, to yeah. be discipling or others, but also to be discipled so that, that yeah. what I'm, what I'm giving to my congregation on a Sunday morning through a song is, is not me, but I'm giving them Jesus, what Jesus yeah. has been giving me through the week I'm giving, giving to them on a Sunday morning. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. And so that can, that can work through, through teaching, but also I would ask you, how do you, how do you go about 
both writing songs that are formative in a positive sense for, for people, um, whether mm-hmm. that's on an album or, or in your church. Um, yeah. And then how do you go about selecting songs that are positively yeah. formative for, right. for your people? Yeah. Um, yeah, man, both of those, yeah, both, both of those can bring about some pretty unique challenges. Yeah. Um, in terms of, yeah, in terms of, well, let's go selecting songs. Selecting songs is a touch easier because there's so many yeah. songs that exist. Right. Um, so, you know, um, you know, and a lot, a lot goes into that, like the text, you know, what text are we, what text are we, are we coming right. from? Maybe a series that we're in. Um, sometimes it is a new song that we're trying to, you know, that we're trying to introduce. Um, sometimes it is, uh, a lot of times also it is just like, you know, playing, like I've learned uh, to play through, you know, sets mm. to see like where, where the, where the spirit can be like pressing yeah. on and pushing on. And, um, and then like, you know, like going that way. Sometimes it's in the moment we've had so many times uh, on a Sunday where we're, we have something planned uh, and then the, and then in the moment, everybody or at least me it's like okay here's a left here here comes a left turn right, right. and you know th- those are those are formative you know in their own ways because because god knows what yeah. the people in the room need you know right um and so yeah that's that's it it's, it comes with this challenge just just because there's so many songs that exist um some of them are really really good some of them sound good but aren't that great in terms of their content yeah yeah. Um, and it's tough because some sometimes there's such a sometimes there's just a weird overlap of this song sounds amazing, but then when you when you look at the content, it's actually not saying very much, or or sure. or maybe it's saying something too off, like maybe saying something too much to where we could pull, you know, spiritually without without really realizing we can pull something from it that we're not supposed to. Because mm-hmm. I don't think anybody goes into a set list or goes into songwriting thinking we're going to lead people astray. But I think sometimes we can, we can say things so much or so often that the, that without knowing it, it pulls the song out of, out of where it's supposed to, what it's supposed to be. Yeah. So sure. that's the, those are the kind of pitfalls um, where you're not pitfalls, but those are the, you know, those things that we have to really be careful for that I have to really be careful for is, you know, a song that sounds great. Um, but doesn't have a bunch of content or vice versa. Yeah, someone that has a ton yeah. of content, but it's not very well written. <laughs> right, right, <laughs> you, know, right. like, you know what I mean? So yeah, those, that, that can be weird. It, amazingly again, like being, being here at new life, there's such a history of rich history of great songs Yeah, um, that we have a lot, even there, we have a lot to pull from and we, uh, and, and a lot of these songs, you know, overcome is one of them just like, Right. That's an anthem for our church. You know, like that. Yeah. That's not just a great song that came out of a, of some co-write. Um, mm-hmm. It actually means something to the people that that go to this church. And so right. um, just a blessing there. Right. And so, yeah. And then and then with songs that we write, uh, I do try to say things that we don't say a lot. Um, yeah. I was sitting in a I was sitting in a in a. Um, Stuart Townend was giving a talk in Nashville to a room full of songwriters one time. And uh, he was uh, he was saying, like, I want us to write right now. We write uh, narrow and shallow. Right. So yeah. we write about a very few things. And even about those things, we know we only go so deep. Yeah. Yeah. In them. And so he was saying what he what he would desire for for writers that write music for the church is that we that we deep that we deepen and widen. Um, yeah, our subject matter that we write about so more good. things and that we write deeply um, about those things. And so that talk kind of marked me where I don't want to go into a writing session just writing about the same things that we have a thousand songs about. You know, uh-huh. I don't know how many more songs we need about the love of God. We have a billion mm-hmm. of them, mm-hmm. um, you know, but, you know, I, I think I think we need songs about how to love each other. Um, yeah. Yeah. You know, I, I don't know how many songs we need about victory. Um, I know right. that we need songs about like, you know, about like lament, you know, and trusting yeah. the Lord through, yeah. through those things. And so 100%. like, but it, and, and still have it be palatable, <laughs> you know, like people still should want to sing these songs because we are right. writing it for people to sing. As well. I feel you know? terrible so, after church today. I don't know why. I just, <laughs> <laughs> and maybe you should, I don't know, you know, yeah, right. I don't, sometimes you know, like, I don't know that we're supposed to come home from church every Sunday feeling like we could charge hell with a water pistol. <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah. Like sometimes we, the, the thing I love so much about the about like the speakers here is that you know they're not always trying to make people you know feel great. 
Um, sure. You know, sometimes they just bring a challenging word and and let people wrestle, you know, let people wrestle with it. So anyway, mm-hmm. uh, with songs, I try to, yeah, I try to, eat, or even if we are writing about something that we've, that we've, that we sing about often, like how, how, how can we say this differently? How can we say this creatively? How can we push up against some of the guardrails that, that we have? Um, not, not because we don't want to go outside of what is good religion, but simply because we don't want to go outside of what makes us comfortable. Mm. Um, so how can we, you know, tactfully, tastefully, yeah, uh, yeah, but but sincerely push up against some of those bumpers in order to right. get people to see God a little more fully. Um, right. Yeah. So those are things I go through I, almost every right at this point. That's awesome. You know, I don't know that we need more I songs. I know we need a ton of we songs. Yeah. That's what I'm. Those are things I want to write so much more. Uh, less I songs. Less less, especially in America, less songs that put us in our own little silos of individuality. Mm. But songs that help us fully see that we're a part of a of a family. Yeah, absolutely. That's beautiful. Um, yeah, I, I just think if if another song comes out of one of the you have you seen, seen the worship leader research stuff that's been coming out about how the big four churches have released pretty much everything in the top twenty five CCLI. Um, and it's not if, the, it's not just the top twenty five. It's more like the top one hundred and fifty. Yeah, uh, it's, it's, I actually it's wild. I actually just went through the the uh, just just for fun. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, I went through the just today. I went through the top the top 100 CCLI, and wow. man, it's like ten names that just show right. up constantly over and over and over. Again. You know, they they cross. You know, they'll cross over. Sometimes this writer will go to that church or whatever. Yeah, but it, it's ultimately like the same ten or fifteen people, and they're yeah. all throughout the top one hundred. <clears throat> you know, and right. those are just songs we're singing right now. So you can right. go fifty or sixty down, um, yeah. and still see those same names, and that's kind of yeah. wild. That's kind of wild. Yeah, uh, it is. And they're yeah. So and not to knock anybody, but you know, it's homo- it's like a, it's a homogenous group. So it are is. we really getting the full expression of of even the even the American church? Are we right. getting that full expression? Um, I don't think so. So yeah. yeah, yeah. And for our listeners that don't know, CCLI CCLI is basically the licensing for worship yeah. songs. So it kind of catalogs the most sung songs sung songs in our churches song. across America. Yeah. Um, yep. and so, yeah, so many of those songs come from the same few churches and, and yep. yeah, just over and over again, it seems like every album has five songs about giants, mountains, valleys, some kind of storm. battles, war, yeah, storm, kind of natural disaster. Yeah. yeah. All those things. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh huh. But yeah, it's deep so and wide, man. Let's yep, get yep. deeper. Let's get wider. Amen. Cause it is so, it's so eye focused. I'm facing yep. this battle and I need God to come and do this on my behalf. I'm facing this giant and I need God to come and do this on my behalf. There's a mountain in my way and I need God to move it on my behalf. Right. And it's just over and over and over again. And it's not that there's not a place for those songs. And I acknowledge a lot of people are going through really hard things and need to sing those songs. Absolutely. But if that's all we sing all the time, we're just missing out on so much depth and width. And we're actually, and, and I actually think that we're blocking what our what our faith could do as a collective too. You know what I mean? Like yeah, if you look at the yeah. story of the church, it hasn't always been one solo act that God moved mountains for. It's actually right, been right. a community of people that were seeking the Lord together. That and they became mm. each other's miracles. Like that's what a lot of the old New Testament church was about: is that everyone had everything they need, not because God intervened, but because the people saw themselves as a family and took care of each other's needs. So, right. so yeah, I think the need, the needs of the individual are one thousand percent valid and should be you know and should be paid attention to. But we also have to pay attention to the fact that a lot of times God wants God God creates a miracle in me that's a miracle for somebody else. Like the thing yeah, I need beautiful. may not be the thing. Like my strength could be your weakness, and your weakness could be my you know you know or or vice versa. Like your strength could be my weakness, and that's how mm-hmm. we lean on each other. So when we sing a bunch of I songs. It puts us at the center of this story um, when we're a not and it, but it also it also kind of blinds us to the needs of the other people that we can meet. And then the law of sowing and reaping says that whatever you sow, you shall reap. Right? Those mm-hmm. who refresh others shall also be refreshed. So mm-hmm. in a way, like singing these songs isn't just you know unfair or isn't just like just putting us in the silos. It's also like blocking what God can do in our lives because it's blocking us from seeing wow. how we could be the hands of God into somebody else's life. For sure. Yeah. And and what a what a tragedy it would be to just sing 
me and Jesus songs and and that's beautiful but then to be so yeah. laser focused on Jesus that that he's like hey look at the person next to you and you miss it because you're so yeah. focused on what's Jesus doing for me um, yeah and for me for me there's a direct correlation between how the how the church is fumbling the the justice conversation and yeah. the songs we sing in church you know what I mean um, because how can you see how can you see how your brother is struggling or feels oppressed when all you got is you and Jesus in a mountain in front of you, you know? Right. Um, right. So that, you know, for me like that, that a lot of that, a lot of that comes gets into my heart as well is yeah. I can see the correlation between how we sing about ourselves in church and how we neglect each other in the world. And I want to mm -hmm. change that. Most people are not worship leaders. Most people aren't picking the songs for their church, mm -hmm. although they're probably yeah. suggesting songs to their worship leaders, yeah. sending, well, sending the Monday morning yeah. email. Um, <laughs> but most most of them are not picking songs for their churches. So what advice would you give to the average congregant, the average churchgoer, when it comes to um, the, the music we're listening to, the way we engage at church, um, and maybe mm -hmm. curating those Spotify playlists? Yeah. You know, the, you know, algorithms are so amazing because mm. they work the way, uh, you know, a lot of people say, oh, it's just my algorithm. You know, it, yeah. it's just it's geared toward this. Well, you inform it, right? Like, yeah. Um, yeah. And so I think like intentionally like digging. Sometimes I, I'll go on Spotify and there's a bunch of, you know, there's a bunch of playlists now that Spotify has. Spotify is actually doing a, right. a better job of getting more of the, you know, not like the not so mainstream um uh, music like a chance mm -hmm. to be seen yeah. so you know and you just remember you inform the algorithm it doesn't you know it works for you you don't work for it and you know swipe swipe up a little more yeah, yeah, <laughs> see yeah. what's going on in other parts of the world don't be afraid to listen to a christian song in a different language trust that they're saying something mm -hmm. good about jesus yeah. um and, and give it a you know give it a listen and you i think you'd be amazed at what you find uh when you when you just go looking you it's hard to see what you're not looking for Oh, that's, um, that's a word. <laughs> and so, um, and so like, go look for it, go search, yeah. you know, be uncomfortable for a little bit. I, I remember when I made a, a, a big old gospel playlist one time, there's just, there's this kid in my, at our former church, um, who asked me for it. And I just sent him the link here, have at it. And he came cool. back and he was like, a lot of these songs are good. I didn't know what to do with them, with some of them, <laughs> you know, yeah. but he was just so like jazzed about listening to this music. Um, that had the same end goal of all the things that he had, that he was comfortable with. Um, so right. don't run from discomfort. Yeah, live in, lean into that. it, live into it a little bit and see what you I find. Love that. Cool. Well, thank you for joining us today, D. It's, it's been an enlightening conversation and I'm really grateful for you and your work at New Life and, and with all the different avenues where you're releasing music. And so what music can we be looking out for coming out from you? For sure. I think the most the thing that's coming the soonest is a song called By the Savior's Power with um, my friends Anchor Hams. Um, I got to sing that with my brother uh, Rico, Ricardo. Um, and so, yeah, that's a new that's the thing that's coming out sooner. And then who knows? There's always something in the works. Uh, <laughs> there's always something fun yeah. in the works. So, yeah. Yeah, cool. Yeah, so check out D Anchor Hymns, Common Hymnal. Um, you've got a couple solo EPs out. Um, where can people find you online? Are you on social media? Yeah, uh, I'm on Twitter, uh, mostly talking about basketball and hip hop. Nice. Uh, I'm on Instagram, mostly sharing goofy things in my story. Uh, I also have a I also have an Instagram page called New Song Gym that I oh yes I, I follow started. it. You follow it? Good, good, good. I do. Uh, it's I my do. it's actually something I'm really excited about. I decided to to just stop complaining about um, songs and start trying to help yeah. you find. The songs, the good ones. So even for the people it. that want to find the find new songs and find di find different style of songs, um, my page New Song Gym on I on Instagram uh, uh, highlights a lot of good songs that I just find as I'm as I'm treasure hunting as well. So yeah, yeah, New Song Gym. So glad. So so D, thank you for joining us on the thank Living you. Room Disciple. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for tuning in to the Living Room Disciple podcast. The conversation between Nick and D was an absolute blessing for me, and I'm hoping that you can say the same. D has more music coming out, so make sure to follow him on social media, and you can find all those links in the show notes below. As Nick mentioned earlier, our website is live. You can find us at livingroomdisciple.com, and you can find all the information about contacting us with episode ideas or speaking requests, and also you can find out information about supporting us on Patreon and helping to be a part of growing the work that we're doing here at the Living Room Disciple Media. 
Thank you so much for tuning in today to the Living Room Disciple Podcast, where discipleship finds a home.